everybody it's your girl evie from because evie said so we're going to be going over law and order svu today i know you saw it like did you see it because i saw it and i'm going to be talking about that plus law and order organized crime just a little bit later so we're going to be talking about season 22 in the year we all fail that's the name of the title y'all let's get right into it How did it all begin? Well, we see on March the 7th, there's a restaurant named Vanessa's and it's full of customers. And Ira is the partner of Vanessa. And during this time, they are trying very hard to make sure they have the reservations that they need. During this time, we know because we've lived it, that coronavirus has started around that time in the United States and it started getting bad. So we see this lady and we notice that Vanessa's getting some cancellations and she's kind of worried about that. So now Corona's taken over. We fast forward, the lockdown has begun in the city and we see Vanessa struggling to pay her bills. Ira and her just laid off their head cook for the restaurant. So they're kind of, you know, panicking at this time. We see Eddie, <clears throat> her husband, is at home with her because he's been laid off of Broadway because he plays the trumpet, but nobody needs that to be happening right now during coronavirus. So he too is out of work. So he's drinking. Their son is not able to go to school. He's in college, remember? All the colleges were closed. So they had to come home. So they're really struggling during this lockdown. I mean, all of us were, right? So they're building outside seating to get customers because, you know, they want to do whatever they possibly can in order to make sure that they make money, you know, and I kind of fell for her. So her husband's laid off. Then on top of that, their grandmother, her mother is living with them and her mom gets sick. So what happened? Well, her mom gets sick. Eddie's dad gets sick. He goes to Michigan to take care of his parents because they're immunodeficiency compromised. So he has to go take care of them. The kids on the street ain't wearing masks. They think this is all a joke. And once they had laid off the head cook, you know, they laid off 40 other people. So now it's just her and Ira. Her mom is being incubated. Um, she's been in... Um, She's been put on a ventilator, I should say. And then we fast forward to 2021. Guess what? Her mom died. Okay. I mean, a lot of us have gone through that. She can't get along for the rent. She's been a great tenant for 20 years. Her marriage is ending because her and Eddie are constantly arguing over what's been going on. It's almost like being in the lockdown, we blamed our loved ones for being in the lockdown, but you can't lock people up in the same vicinity for three, four, five months and not expect some type of disagreements to happen. I mean, it's happened in my life. I was locked in here with my two daughters. They didn't drive me crazy, but there were instances where we all needed some space. And we, we couldn't get it because we were locked in the house, just like the lockdown. But let's fast forward a little bit. So what does she do? Well, she meets the realtor at the restaurant, Vanessa does, because at this point she can't get a loan. She's going to lose her business and she has to give the keys to the realtor because the brokerage company is not interested in giving her a loan. I mean, this is during the time of the virus. You think companies will want to work with people so they wouldn't lose what they have. And then you say, well, what about the eviction moratorium? Well, what about it? Because in her lease, they found a workaround for that. So essentially, she's getting put out on the street. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. You know, so she meets the realtor there to give him the keys. She pulls out a knife because she's just like frustrated at this point. She's like, I'm not giving up my place. You can't take it from me. You know, he's panicking because, of course, he's at knife point and she ain't letting him leave. So we see Olivia. She's walking down the street. It's lunchtime. She wants to pick up some lunch from Vanessa's. So she goes in. She goes in there. And what does she walk into? She walks into this. Okay. Meanwhile, Carisi and Amanda visit her dad. He thinks that they're together, which I thought was so cute because you really want them to be together. But we know Carisi has another boo at this point, right? 
But Amanda doesn't know. You know what I'm saying? I think she suspects, but she doesn't know. So we go back to Vanessa's. We see that Olivia is there. She wants lunch. She's like, whoa, what's going on? You know, she sees the knife. There are two police officers in there. And they've got her, Vanessa, at gunpoint. One's got a taser. One's got a gun. I'm going to say this right quick. This is a white lady. And she is pointing a knife at someone. And, and as much as we think that she's a threat, at this point, she's not that big of a threat to the police. You don't see them shooting her right away. You don't see them throwing her to the ground right away. There is a difference. Systemic racism is still around. We need to wake up. But anyway, let's get back to Vanessa. Like I said, I started to feel for her because she's a business owner. Not only is she a business owner, but she's a mom. She's a wife and her whole life is crumbling. She just lost her mom. I mean, I would be devastated if I lost my mom. So they closed actually a week ago and we see the Black Lives Matter sign in the window and I thought that was pretty cute. I thought that was nice of them to acknowledge that black lives do matter. You know, a lot of businesses said that during the time. You know, some of them were woke, some of them weren't. They were just trying for people not to burn their businesses to the ground. But in this particular instance, I, I really do think that maybe she did think black lives do matter. Well, anyway, she's got this knife. The officer's in there. Liv tells the officers, okay, go ahead and leave. I got this. You know what I'm saying? Like, go and get out, out, out of here. Do not shoot her. Vanessa has clearly lost her mind and her patience. And Liv tries to get them to calm down. She, now, But now, she's like, well, let's talk about it. And Vanessa's like, okay, let me get my purse. So she gets her purse. She pulls out a gun. So now she's got the gun on the realtor. And Liv is there. This guy is having a panic attack. He's trying to tell her the brokerage company is just not willing to work with her. And so what Olivia tells the police officers before they leave, she tells them, contact my supervisor. Contact your supervisor. Because obviously this has turned into something more. So we see that Deputy Chief Garland shows up and Kat. And Kat tries to reach her on her cell, but of course she can't. They try to call the phone inside, but ain't nobody answering because Vanessa's not having it at this point. So Captain Benson is trying to de-escalate the situation as best as she can. But what do they do? They call hostage negotiation and SWAT that they actually call in at this point because, I mean, they're going by the book. She has a gun and she's pointing it at somebody and she's got Captain Olivia Benson in there. So, you know, people are worried. Liv convinces Vanessa to let Joey go. You know, she tells the police when Joey gets out there, he tells the police what's going on inside. And then Vanessa's husband, who has been gone all this time and they're estranged, ends up calling the police back because now they've called him and he wants to talk to her via FaceTime. So he tells her, he's like, look, Vanessa, what's up? You know, we knew this was going to happen. Why don't you just calm down? Go ahead and give him the keys, you know, and we can get up out of this. And she's like, what? You've been gone all this time. You don't get to talk to me right now, okay? You left me stranded here in the middle of all this mess by myself. And he's like, look, I had to take care of my parents. And she's like, I get that, but you could have came back in between time. So he's like, well, I'm on the flight now. She's like, don't bother. You don't even got to come back. Matter of fact, it's over. Click. So she hangs up on him. And Olivia's standing there like, oh, my God. So... She tries to come over and comfort Vanessa, and Vanessa threatens her with the gun. Now she's going to shoot Liv, her friend. Well, next we see that Amanda's dad has fell. He's being taken to the hospital. Amanda said, you know, they said he had a major stroke. Remember, he had a minor stroke before, but now he's had a major stroke. I mean, he doesn't have health care. He doesn't have a will or directors per the doctor's conversation with Amanda. She doesn't know any about this because he's married and his wife should be there. Well, she needs to figure it out. And here comes Carisi. Amanda's panicking and Carisi is right there for her. He doesn't know what's, you know, she doesn't even know what's going on with Liv at this point because she's wrapped up in her own situation. So Carisi briefs her. He tells her what's going on, the situation with Liv, blah, 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 right? 
So we go back to the Captain Benson and we see that this is a very tense situation. The new hostage negotiation people are there. They have snipers out there. Deputy Chief Garland tells the police outside that Vanessa is in a crisis. She ain't insane. She's in a crisis. So don't treat this like this is just a a random shooter. This is a person that's losing everything and she's having a moment, basically, but a very deadly moment at this point. So Vanessa tells um, Liv, I don't have any life, I don't have any health insurance. Because Liv's like, look, why don't you talk to somebody? And she's like, who? Who am I talk to? I ain't got no health insurance. And then not just that, but I don't want to talk to somebody via the phone. I'd rather talk to someone face to face. People are here, but they're not here. We can't reach out and hug people anymore. This is disgusting. And Liv says, well, why don't you take some medication? She's like, uh, I've been taking some pills. They've been giving me crazy dreams, so I'm not taking nothing. Liv's like, okay, 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 calm down. You know, she's going through what we have gone through, what we have experienced. What I didn't realize is that small businesses and even some large businesses, some stayed afloat during all of this and some just floundered and failed. You know, some people lost their livelihoods. I didn't know it was this serious. I tried my best to patronize small businesses during the, um, Worst of the pandemic when I had food delivered to me and my children because we couldn't go out. So I tried to give it to the small businesses that surround us, you know, because I knew that they were having a problem. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people were getting evicted. Were, were, well, they were being evicted, but they didn't actually get evicted due to uh, people saying that uh, they couldn't evict them, basically. You know, they made some kind of amendment law, whatever. But anyway, Liv didn't know about her mom. She didn't know that her mom had passed, you know, and Vanessa's concerned because she's like, look, nobody's been wearing masks. These people still not social distancing. I thought if they got vaccinated, people would come back. All she wants to do is run her restaurant and live her life. And COVID has destroyed it. Not only has COVID destroyed lives, it's destroyed businesses. It's destroyed livelihoods. It's destroyed marriages. It's destroyed relationships with your children. Because her and her son, they're on the outs. Because she put them out. She said, you killed your grandma because you didn't listen. You didn't social distance. You didn't put no mask on. So she did because of you. That's a wow. You know what I'm saying? So she puts him out during the pandemic. So they on the outs. So let's jump back to Creasy for a minute and Amanda. You know, he's still there with her. Amberlyn is the wife of her dad. Her dad is in the hospital. So all of a sudden, Amberlyn hasn't been there all this time, but she pops up now. So she pops up and so she says, well, how's he doing? You know, is he going to die? Do you have a DNR? Do not resuscitate. Why is she talking about a DNR? It's like she want him to die. You know what I'm saying? So Liv learns that Vanessa threw her son out, like I was telling you before. And, you know, it's a very shocking thing. Things that are, oh my God, going on right now still to this day. You know, I'm frustrated about it and I'm speaking on it. And I'm so glad that SU, SVU did an episode on this. So Liv tells her, look, I get it. I get it. I understand. You're done. She wants her to tell her son, though, that she's sorry. She's like, look, you don't want him to live with that for the rest of his life. You don't want him to carry that. So let's go ahead and get him in here so you can at least talk to, talk to him. So Liv tells the police outside, why don't y'all go find Nate? So Liv has established a rapport with her at this point. She's doing very good in her negotiations well, in her conversation, you know, she's trying to de-escalate, like I mentioned before. Well, back to Amanda. Carisi calls Nicole and he gives her a rain check because basically he was supposed to be with her the night. But he's with Amanda. You know, him and Amanda are close friends. I wish they were a little closer, but they're close friends. The nurse assumes that Carisi and Amanda are together. So that's two people that assume that they're together just because of the relationship they have. Well, Amanda finds out that her dad was uh, was told to take out a life insurance policy. So we knew Chicky Poo was here for some reason, right? So now Amberlynn shows up because he has an insurance policy on him. So if, she, if he dies, she gets that money, right? Wow. You know what I'm saying? So 
In between time, we focus back on Olivia and her conversation with Vanessa. Liv tells her about Simon, her brother. Remember Simon? Remember her and Simon fell out because he didn't come to meet Liv at the time he was supposed to meet Liv. He was supposed to meet Noah and he just didn't show up. Well, she mentions that to Vanessa. She also tells her about Ed Tucker. You know, you could tell by her conversation with uh, uh, Vanessa about Ed that she really loved him. She really loved him. And she adored him. And he adored her. And even Vanessa realizes that. She says, look, Tucker loved you. You went to Paris with him. And Liv is visibly shaken by the loss because she tells him, she tells Vanessa, you know, he didn't make it. You know, and she says, wow, COVID? And she says, no, brain cancer. You know, she tells Vanessa she has regrets, but she doesn't want her to have the same regret with her son. Now, Amanda wants to know what Carisi wanted to tell her before she went down to Atlanta, but he kind of dodges the question. You know what I'm saying? So he don't want to throw too much at her. Amanda has been the grown up in this situation for a long time when it comes to taking care of her dad and, and things that she's done in her dysfunctional family. And Carisi reminds her, you've been the grown up for a while. And I thought that was just so sweet. Amanda tells Amberlynn, you know what? I've been searching. I've been checking you out. You got some warrants in Florida for forgery and for fraud and writing some bad checks. And she says, basically, you're not even divorced. So are you really married to my dad? And she says, um, okay. And Amanda says, look, this is what you need to do. I'm finna arrest you. You can leave the state or you can go to jail. Which one? You young, you beautiful, you pretty. Just go. So she doesn't want Amberlynn taking care of her dad because her dad has indicated why he was in the hospital when Amberlynn came in, he wasn't comfortable with her. Now, this is the woman he married, but he's not comfortable with her. So basically, Amberlynn says, you're right. I am young. I am pretty. I'm out. So tell him I'll call him. Bye. And Amanda's like, bye. Like, bye, Felicia. So she, we're getting back to Olivia. Liv explains to her that, you know, she hasn't hurt anybody, that Vanessa hasn't hurt anybody, and that, you know, they'll just detain her, they'll take her in for what she's done, but she needs to go ahead and surrender, you know, give the knife up, she understands what she's going through, but this is not the way. So when her son calls her, because now they found her son, he gives Vanessa a call and he tells her, mom, just come home, I love you. You know, we'll, we're going to get through this. And she is taken back because she didn't think that he would forgive her for what she said to him. But Olivia says, look, it's okay to ask for help. You know, you've been taking care of people for so long. Who was taking care of you? You were taking care of your son, your husband, the community, the restaurant, your employees, your partner. Who was taking care of Vanessa? You know, I thought that was really well for her to say that because we often do that as women and as men, we take care of everyone else and we forget about ourselves. And then when we have a mental breakdown, you know, people don't understand. We don't understand. We see that Captain Benson is coming out with Vanessa. She surrendered. She's taken her gun from her, not forcibly. She's actually got her to surrender the gun. And we see all the people in the neighborhood are out there clapping. They're clapping. They didn't want this to go bad. They love Vanessa. They love Vanessa's restaurant. And they loved it so much that they started a GoFundMe page. It's raised $35,000 so far. So Lil tells them, go ahead and take her into custody. I'll go with you. And Deputy Chief Garland tells Olivia, after she's gone ahead and put Vanessa in the car and he tells her, go ahead and take a few days. You know, how are you? And she says, I'm exhausted. You know, that was a very tense situation. She could have died, but she didn't. And I just think that Olivia is quite wonderful in regards to that. You know, Olivia is always there to help. I'm so glad she was there this day. Like I said, COVID has taken so much from us people 
places, things, you know, feelings, relationships, everything. But the one thing it hasn't taken from us, it seems like, is to care for our fellow man. You know, people were bringing people groceries. People were checking on their neighbors. It wasn't all bad. It really wasn't. We were locked in, but we were locked in with love. Zoom served us well. It still does. I just ask that people with social distance, again, because people are not social distancing anymore, and a lot of people aren't wearing masks. Just because you've been vaccinated doesn't mean you don't need a mask. You know, I understand because I've been vaccinated. I got my Pfizer, both shots. And in 10 days, maybe eight days now, I'm supposed to be able to go out without a mask. But because I love my fellow man, and because I don't want to get sick or spread sickness to anyone else, I'm going to mask. And not just that, I double mask. I have teenagers. They need the shot. They don't have one for 14-year-olds yet, but they do have one for my 16-year-old daughter. And I'm still in a quandary. Do I give her the shot? The shots? Do I? I don't know. But anyway... I'm going to be covering Law & Order Organized Crime. This was a great episode. I'm so glad I was able to share it with you guys. I hope that you watch. This is a great show. It's been on for 22 seasons already. You know what I'm saying? And it's been signed up for an additional three more seasons. So come on. I mean, this is great. I love you guys. You are Law & Order fans. True and true. SVU for all of us. We love you. I love you. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Mask up. I love you guys. Until the next time. Bye.